Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Today's video is about these Ford, let's see, let me see, um, CHI 3V Cleveland heads. So I don't think you can see it better on this one, see CHI. Um, I want to start off by saying I am, I'm not as well versed on the Ford stuff as I am the Chevy. I ported far more Windsor Ford heads than I ever have Cleveland's. Matters of fact, before I started this video, I was thinking, had I ever ported a Cleveland head? And the answer is yes, only once. And it was, this would, you have to go back in time, but this would be 2012, the Engine Masters. I was actually going to enter two engines, and one of them was going to be a 427 uh, Ford Cleveland. And I had a set of Speedmaster or Pro Comp. Cleveland heads that I've ported and I only got through I bought three heads because I wanted to do some Testing on one head and then use those to develop the other two Anyway that head it got up to 420 CFM and it was a 225 intake valve really happy with it and I, I, I was pretty impressed and then went to work on the next head and I went to do a valve job and the way you do a valve job is you put a pilot through that your guide hole here I pushed the pilot in and it pushed the uh, guide right out of it with me just pushing down on that head. Anyway, that kind of, I was like, oh, that sucks. So I stopped there. But anyway, point being is I'm not as, there are, I'm a far more Chevy guru than I am at a Ford guru. So if you give me some random, ask me some random questions about uh, which block and stuff, I just don't know. I wish I did. It'd be nice to have that more knowledge bank, but I don't. However, I don't want you to think that I don't know what I'm doing with them because obviously I've ported enough heads and Cleveland heads are, they're slightly different, but it's not, if you've done enough heads, you get the idea. There are several things that I really like about the head that I'm going to go over, but I just don't want you to think I'm a complete moron on it, but I don't know all the facts and intricacies of the Ford stuff. And I mentioned this because I had put the video about the CHI intake that was for this and I said it was a Cleveland intake. Well, because it was going on the Cleveland heads, forgetting that on Cleveland's, they're different. It's actually like a Cleavor because you're going on a Windsor block, so it's got a water crossover. To me, it was still Cleveland because it was going on a Cleveland head, although Ford guys were like, no, you're absolutely wrong. And, you know, the it is what it is. But I just want to get that out of the way. But let's talk more about this head. And I'm going to tell you why I like it. Before I do that, I'm going to say I grew up as a Chevy guy. But I kind of wish that someone had pushed me more towards the Ford stuff because from the design standpoint, Chevy have, are great, but Ford has some really cool stuff with these Clevelands. Now, I, I, now, to be honest with you, I know a lot of the Windsors are out there. There's far more Windsors than ever are Clevelands. But man, the Cleveland stuff is, to me, is the cat's meow. And I'm surprised not more Ford guys do it. So let me give you some examples. So when I talk about like you want a really good race head, let's say high-end race head, whether it be Chevy or Ford, but easy on the Chevy stuff, if I can get the valve where it's canon, so if I get the valve, in other words, most most heads, like wedge heads, such as on the Chevys and the Windsors, the valve just moves straight up and down. Well, on a Cleveland, like this one, it's actually moving away, so it goes at an angle, so it's actually, as it opens, it gets further away from the cylinder wall, instead of being at the same point from the cylinder wall the whole time, like on a wedge. That's great. The only other head, the big block Chevy does the same thing. They, they're canned like that, so they move away from there too. That's one thing that's great about this. On a true race head, that's nice. The second thing is the valve location. So when you have a wedge head, in other words, you have the two valves right next to each other. Um, we, I've talked about cross flow before. It's the air literally has to come out, come around, come back this way. So, or in other words, come in this way, come this way, come this way to come out. On like this head, because of the valve rotation, the air literally comes in this way and around. It's like an S-spin as opposed to a gigantic right angles. Because of this, it, there's Darren's talked about this before, it really helps on the high RPM stuff because it really helps with cross flow. In other words, the air coming out during the overlap period because actually your, your, in, your draw from your air is actually coming from the exhaust side as the exhaust um, leaves and right during that phase, um, the exhaust valve is still opening, but it's closing and it's still open. The intact valve opens because there's a pressure draw from this and that's pulling the air in. If you can have them this location like this or closer this way, it pulls more and it makes more power. So this design is better than a wedge having them in line by far. One, you've got the valve moving away and then you've got this that helps during the cross flow. This, that cannot be measured on a flow bench. I mean, you can, but 
it's going to be pretty tough. Anyway, point being is that's fantastic. Then you've got something else. So now this head, if I look at it, it's, it's raised up. Now I know they make different versions of these where they've got ones that are raised up even higher. But if you look at this, most Chevy heads um, have the port start opening here, not up here. So this gives you a better shot to the port. Now, the reason why they were also raised up is because of the valve angle. The Cleveland, I'm not sure about this exact head, but the, I know for sure on the Pro Comp Cleveland one, it was a nine degree valve angle. That's pretty steep, which caused you to have to raise up the runner to make it follow with the path of the valve angle. So that's another great thing about Cleveland heads that they have. Um, the other thing is because of the shallower valve angle, this chamber gets much smaller. If you look at a, a small block Chevy, you're going to have like, you know, 64 cc chambers and they're pretty big. These you can make much, much, much smaller because of that valving itself. It flattens it out. The chamber itself can shrink. So especially on an NA deal, you're definitely going to get more compression ratio with just having a flat top piston than having to use a dome. And flames don't like to travel across domes. They like to go across flat top, but not across a dome. So definitely some advantage there. So you got all that going for it. Really great thing. So um, it makes for an amazing head. And I don't think several, Chevy, when I was younger, because I was young and stupid, I thought all Fords suck because they kept getting beat. What I didn't, you know, what I didn't understand at the time was, one, the Fords that were probably getting beat that I saw were the 302 base versus the 350 Chevy. And then the, quite honestly, the Windsor head stock were horrible compared to the Chevrolet's heads that were stock. So, I mean, both sucked, but definitely the, Ugh, you poor guys with the Windsors. Meanwhile, you have these things that are just bad to bone. There's cast iron versions that came from the factory that also were amazing. So these weren't even in my wheelhouse to think about, but they are an amazing head. If you got these same features and you had to get them in a small block Chevy, this would cost you a fortune. It'd be like a SB2 type of deal. So it's a dramatic difference. Not that they don't have designs like this for other engine makes. They're just far more expensive. Not that these are cheap. So anyway, that's me bragging about how cool Ford heads really are. And I think if you're watching this and you're an LS guy and you're like, they ain't got nothing. LS is you're in the same situation. This head has so much more advantage than you. Also, you know, I didn't mention this either. Chevy's, small block Chevy's usually have the two ports right next to each other. So like mirrors, so you can flip them over. Um, Fords, they're individual, which is great, especially for intake runner designs. As far as like, I should say intake runner designs, if you have a tunnel ram, because it's really straight and it's nice. It sucks on a single plane because these ones are usually shorter and these ones are longer on the outside. But this is dip better, um, especially for tunnel ram. And if you LS guys are like, so LS got you beat everything, LS is better. They have this, great. That, that's cool, they have this layout and design. You're not moving the valve away from the chamber like they are, or away from the cylinder wall. And you don't have the rotation like this. They have an aftermarket LS head that does this, but not from the factory. So I know LS heads are amazing, but these deals to me are top notch. So on a small block side, don't care, Chrysler, whatever else. To me, the Cleveland is the ticket. Now the rest of the engine, we can that could be a long, long debate about which one's better versus, you know, small block Chevy, LS, Cleveland, Windsor on the short block side, but I'm not getting into that. Point being, I love these heads. Now, let me get to some specifics about it. So anyway, this is um, the smaller version. I shouldn't say smaller because they have a smaller one than this. This is 225 cc's intake runner. So it's real, relatively small because you got to remember also that because it's raised up, the runner itself is a little longer. Um, they have a 219 intake valve, which is a pretty big intake valve, and a 1650 exhaust valve. I'm not so... I don't really ever really run exhaust valves that big on a small block Chevy side or a small block anything side. To me, it seems a little excessive. However, this particular head's going on a 363 that will have a turbo on it, and it's been about 8,200 RPM. So, um, I don't know, but that's how they come, so it's, it's fine. Going by it strictly by its craftsmanship, it looks fantastic. Now, these are made in Australia, so, you know, I love my Aussies. Um, but if you look at my CNC work, it's nice. So you have the top cut, comes right into the chamber, and it looks beautiful. 
That looks like a really good job there. They prung them right. Look, they didn't even have to hand blend and it looks like it's tying right into the valve job perfectly. The only thing I would say is if I had, if it was me, I would probably cartridge roll this just to blend this top, this angle in here because I bet it picks up some flow. Um, the only thing I have a criticality about on this head is this. And some of you may not understand, but some of you are like, yeah, I get you. Trying to pick the better light. Okay. Well, I'll do that. This is the guide right here. I used to do it like this. That's a better shot. See how they are? What they did is they installed the guide then into the CNC programming. And it looks like it, oh, look, it fits perfectly into the vein itself. Um, sounds great, except for here's a, a thing, and someone told me this, and it's the truth. I used to do guides like this all the time. And another headporter who's a uh, uh, pretty good headporter, his name is Curtis Boggs. He used to work for RFD. I'm not sure if he still did. He privately messaged me. He's like, uh, not trying to hurt your feelings or anything, but you need to stop doing that. Because the guy that has to do the valve job after you is going to hate you. And I was like, what do you mean? Well, here's why. When we put, we have a, I have a dead pilot, which means it goes in right in the hole. And it's tapered at the top. And whenever you cut out the guides like this, it uses the outer ring here to center that guide. So it centers it right. When it's like this, if you put it in, it, sometimes it tries to move this way or this way. In other words, it's not actually perfectly centered. So it causes when you go to cut, and why is that important? Because that pilot centers everything from. So when you cut the valve job, if this pilot's off this way, your valve job's gonna cut off that way. And then it's not perfectly round. So it ends up being a real pain to get the valve job to come in perfectly round when the pilot can't center right because parts are gone. Now, some of you are like, well, AFR does that. No, theirs are flat across the top so that the pilot sits perfectly in there. Um, that's my only criticality about this whole thing is the next guy that has to do this valve job, if he's using dead pilots, he's good luck, buddy. Um, sometimes they're easier than others, but it just takes one just to be moved over just a fraction and you're going to fight that valve job. So that's my only criticality, and they did it on the exhaust too. Let me show you the exhaust. So there, same thing happened there. Not quite as bad, but definitely there. Now, the exhaust port itself, it looks like it's in standard exhaust port height, so this isn't raised up. Still a little bit higher than what you had to picture. Now, I did some measurements on the head, so I'm gonna share those with you. This is what I found when I measured. Your throat's actually 89.6, so about 90%, great. Bowl, 99.5%, great. Bowl, by the way, would be, if I take the pilot, or the guide and go straight across. That's the bowl, perfect. Look how beautiful that looks, amazing. Look at the short side too, great shape there. Um, we then have the uh, short side, that's SS 3.51. Usually if you can multiply this by, if you had to uh, take care of the decimals, usually that's what's gonna flow, like 351. We're gonna find out in a second, because I'm gonna flow it. And the push rod pinch measures 2.96, which is actually um, a little larger than what I've thought. Um, but, uh, anyway, there you go. I'm going to go ahead and flow it. Now, here's the valves I'm using. This is just a Freya. This is a nail head exhaust, so I don't have a tulip one that would help out exhaust flow. This one is just an SI. This is actually a big block valve, but I had it cut down, like a big block Chevy valve. I had it cut down to 219. I put a 45 degree seat on it, and then I put a 33 degree back cut. It should work fine. I'm going to flow it on a 4155 bore, um, because I think... His 363 is a large bore version with a shorter stroke. So I'm going to flow it that way just to see what it does. And I'm, you get to see the results as soon as I get done doing it right now. Here are the flow numbers. And they're pretty impressive. Uh, they actually did better than I thought they would. At least on the intake side. Now, the numbers I really like or I care about are four, six, and one inch valve lift. Several of you are gonna say there's no sense in uh, caring about one inch valve lift. I've said this before and I'll say it again. When I look at the one inch valve lift, it's not because there's a cam gonna have a one inch valve lift, it's because it tells me how stable the port is. So what I mean by that is this flow bench can, uh, I can turn it up, but I floated at 28 inches of vacuum. If you were to say, um, flow it at um, 40 inches or higher, or an actually in a running engine, we'll see much, much higher vacuum than what my flow bench 
can do maxed out. And so what that happens is usually when a port's not stable, like say for instance, this port in a way is not stable because it does back up flow. Um, this tells me that the port's not stable and it's because of airspeed. When a running engine, um, what's gonna happen is it's gonna have more airspeed than what the bench has. So this instability, even though it, let's say it happened at 500 valve lift and you've got a 400 inch lift cam, that airspeed would still happen even though you had a 400 inch lift cam and you would see dramatic differences and things happening. In other words, the flow winch is a great tool, but it's only measuring static and it can't be, and it is not absolute. So when I show the flow numbers, I want you to keep that in mind. So I flow at one inch because I really want to see if the port stays stable. And I probably confused the crap out of you when I said it because in my mind it sounded better, uh, at least saying it. So anyway, that's the reason why I do it. Ideally, what you want to do is see the port continue to gain flow as you increase valve lift, because as the valve gets out of the way, it should be fine. When there's too much air going through there and it jumps the short side, there's, there's things in the port you should do. However, looking at the numbers, this port is fantastic. Here's what I mean. 400 number is probably my, my best one I look at. 293 CFM from a small block Chevy head there are many big block heads that can't do this. So that's a big block Chevys. My Porter ones, they'll, they'll do that, but still, they're a much bigger valve, much bigger port. That's a great number. You might be saying, well, how is that possible? One, remember the valve's moving away from the cylinder wall as it opens. Nine degree valve angle raise up. This thing's amazing. Let's go to 600. 350 CFM at 600. I mean to tell you guys that's that's outstanding. Not to mention, remember, this is a 225 cc intake port. So it's not big because you could make there's much bigger versions of these and they'll flow well over 400 CFM. This is a more moderately sized intake port, and to move that much air at 600 valve lift is pretty outstanding. And then my peak valve lift actually occurred at 900 at 380. So really, really good. I think if someone was a really try at that head, um, you probably could get over 400. So great head. Disadvantage, this is a Ford thing. Your exhaust flow always sucks. So yeah, your peak at 235, and look how it keeps climbing. It tells me it kind of, it's not too bad. But that's peak 235, this without an exhaust pipe. But look at four, 171. That's not horrible, but it's not great. And you might be saying, well, did they do something wrong? No, it's more of the design. When you look at a Ford's exhaust port here, now this is the stock exhaust port height, um, that nine degree valve angle, it flattens out this. So in order for that to, for this exhaust port to work, you really should have raised up the exhaust port. And they're just not, because I'm sure when Ford initially designed this, there were head, headers in mind. So if you raise it up this way, you got strut towers and stuff with the Mustangs and a whole bunch of other stuff that was in the way. So this was kind of like, got to make it work with the car. In an ideal world, you'd have the raised up exhaust ports. And CHI does offer a version like that, it's just not this one. So that's the disadvantage. It's not that someone messed up on the port job. It's that the design would not allow it to do better. So keep that in mind. Still, not bad at all. So overall, if you're asking me about this head, you're like, should I purchase it? Yeah. Now, I bet you this would be tearing up the streets in most things. So especially if you got a 408, you're building a Cleavor, um, man, you're going to have some fun. This is a great thing. So I, I, do I recommend the head? I don't have a clue how much this thing costs. Uh, I don't think they're cheap because they're definitely from Australia, but I'm super tickled with the head. Are there other heads that flow more air? Absolutely. Are there other heads that make more power? Absolutely. Is this a good head? Absolutely. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, remember I'm no Superman and I do make mistakes. You guys take care.